Talking off. Talking off. Do you remember the first time we actually met? I remember it so distinctly because I have to say you are not only my fav favorite writer for all sorts of reasons because you write beautifully and you write powerfully and, 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 and everything you say has, has depth and meaning to us as a culture and to me as a reader and all these sort of things. But the very first time uh, we met, I walked, walked into Phoenix House in London and I'd been living in Japan and I had a first, my first book coming out. And, uh, and I walked through and there was nobody there and, and I thought, well, this is my publication day, you know, like they should all be like turning around in their chairs and doing all these sort of things. And, and there was nobody there. And I, and, and I wandered through, and it was towards the end of the day, and then I had the chance to be introduced by Maggie McKern to you. And that night, you were doing a reading, and you invited me to, um, to come and read. And it was the most extraordinary act of generosity that I, I mean, my, it was my first ever reading. My first, and then I went and read, I think I must have read for 10, 15 Oh, you did. Like, you did. Like, <laughs> read for, oh, I had no idea. <laughs> Right. I'm very glad we did. Yeah. Because we have formed a friendship. Oh, it was fantastic. Formed a friendship. Absolutely. When was that? That was the early 1990s, or maybe 1990 itself. Uh, yeah, it could have been. It could have been 1990. So, uh, but anyway, it was one of the best days, and 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 I sort of oh, well, I've always known that 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 uh, that you know your work would be important to me, but also like then as a friend, then as a reader, and all sorts of things. So and as a drinker, as, as a, a singer. Uh, well, yes, yeah. I mean, we have to do a little, a little, little bit of singing. Ah, uh, <coughs> uh, who would you invite to a dinner party, living or dead? Bring the dead, because it's so much, so much oh, more fun well, to bring the dead. Mr. <laughs> Joyce, yeah. and Mrs. Joyce. Oh, all right. And uh, Mr. Beckett, this is getting very provincial. Mm. <laughs> Um, Not Mrs. Beckett. Mrs. Beckett apparently was very formidable. Only two people in the world have met Mrs. Beckett, apart from right. Samuel, her husband. Two people that I know, Frank Delaney, right. who was a journalist writer, and Harold Pinto. Mm. He met Mrs. Beckett for a brief moment. She didn't socialize. Right. Uh, well, we'd also have a lot of the people would we have. I mean, there's a few Russians in there. Yeah. I'd like Mandelstam. 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 That would be great. He wouldn't attempt so. Ossie and Nadia. Definitely. Yeah, because I mean, she was just, I mean, um, and, uh, what was that But we must love this, we must love this poor earth, for we have not seen another. Just pour out your eternal dreams, talking about blood, one glass stuck on. Poor Mandelstam. Yeah. I love his poetry. I don't Two. read Russian, so I have to be on about that. But no poet, T.S. Eliot, I love utterly, mm. speaks to me more than many who are even more loved. I don't know why. What about Akhmatova? Uh, let me just finish about Mandelstam. I read different translations of Mandelstam, mm. and therefore I'm a second hand leader to it. But he just hits into the depth extraordinary abuse and terror of, of life and his situation. And who else would we have at the dinner? What about Joan of Arc? <laughs> Joan of Arc, that would be interesting. I'll say I was looking extremely depressed. <laughs> Rather than having Will Shakespeare. Ah, he's everywhere. He's giving the dinner. He, he's, yeah, he's within us all anyway, right? He's giving the dinner. Imagine Shakespeare, one human being. I wouldn't mind now um, my own, but say, dead grandfather. I'd like to know. He was a bit of a scoundrel. And, 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 and I'd like to talk to him and, and, and figure. I met, I met him only once in my life when I was about eight years old. But um, I'd like to invite him. To see your father's father? father. My father's father, yeah. When you say a scoundrel, what did he do? Oh, you know, horses and greyhounds and, oh, and a bottle. And the usual. Like that. The usual. <laughs> Talking about scoundrels, I had a wonderful conversation in a hotel in Boston yesterday. A woman came to do the room. I never know the politically correct words to use, but anyhow, she was the maid doing the room. Yeah. And she, she was from Alabama. She was black with wonderful black hair and smiling. And I was a little bit depressed in Boston. This smiling woman came in. I said, I don't want the sheets changed. And she said, you're making my day easy. 
I don't need the Hoover to go back to me. And she said, Miley Moore. And I said, what's your name? She said, Mary. I said, Mary, you look so happy. She said, I'm not smiling. She said, they call me Madam Smile. So I said, are you in love, Mary? Oh, no, she said. I have a boyfriend, don't want a boyfriend, I have four children. Oh, I said, well, you must have had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Where is he? Yes, she said, where he should be, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Mary would be good at the dinner, but she was wonderful. Yeah, that sort of person, I love that sort of person. When somebody, it's, it's about a sense of life and giving. Right. She was a giver, right. with her whole being. But you've been a giver all the way along. I'm trying to be, but... I'm getting old and I need a job. <laughs> I can't live by right. No, it's very hard. That is the truth. Can I ask you a question? Do you, you can ask me yes. Do you, what I, uh, do you what enjoy I yourself? Do you enjoy yourself? Do I enjoy life? Yeah. yeah. I think only marginally. Mm. I think I'm probably over anxious. Partly temperament, partly circumstances. Right. And partly, as you know, writing is such an ongoing anxious thing. You're always trying to write. Even when you're here or on the way here, you think, oh, waiting for me, is that? Right. Do you enjoy yourself? I do, I enjoy myself. Um, but, but it, you know, I think part of the joy, say, I'm thinking about you, part of the joy that, that is unrecognizable is that the, the joy that you bring into other people's lives. So, like, people love Edna O'Brien. And um, you know they love you unreservedly. They don't have. They don't need the baggage of new stories. They they enter that particular landscape of the story that, that they're in, and and, and, and you change You're the world. Joking. No, I think, that, joking. I think that I think that works. I, I think that's true. I mean, otherwise, why write? What's the, what's the what would be the point? Well, why write? Now well, that is a thing I could not answer. Except I think if I were not allowed to write, if I were in a gulag or a penitentiary, mm. or I'd go mad. Mm. Not that I'm saying I'm a full, sanity human being, but not <laughs> being able to do that, I'm sure you'll feel the same. Yeah. It's like breathing. Right. It's a little more difficult than breathing. Oh. oh. What was your favourite bedtime story as a kid? We didn't have such a thing. <laughs> what was Big Ray We were not Not Jack no the Beast, not Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been... Right. <laughs> Shakespeare, to yeah, me, yeah. if I'd heard it. There were literally no stories. The only stories I ever heard in my uh, County Clare childhood were actually now and then someone in the kitchen, very occasionally, would tell a ghost story. That actually, and Eileen is nodding because she recognized, tell a ghost story. Everyone was absolutely, but there were no books or stories. I don't know what it would have done to me to have read or being read to. Right. Probably a very enriching. I didn't have any more prayers, don't forget. Yeah. As I lay me down to sleep, I pray to God. Well, there you I go. Go. There are If I die points. before I wake, I to God, I so to take. That's a story. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's story. A story. <laughs> there are four. Some literature. Uh, we had loads of literature in our house, because Dad was the features editor of the oh, English yeah. Press and the Irish Press. and. Um, so there were books everywhere, and you know, and I did have uh, a bedtime story. I had that, I, I had that untolstoyan thing of the, I had the relatively happy childhood. You know? I had a happy childhood. Come to right. I know this is what's most wrong. <laughs> you have to sort of like try and, and jump in. I used to laugh at Frank, our great friend Frank McCord, um, that he got all the misery and, and left no, none for everybody else <laughs> in the best possible way, because Frank. Oh, you know, I miss Frank so much. Great. Thank you. I, I, so I, you know, I was so close to him. I loved him. Yeah, he loved, loved you. We yeah. saw each other a lot. We saw each other an awful lot. And, and we would sit around and, and, and we'd talk of you. And, you know, uh, and we, had a couple, we had a couple of nights out together, the three of us. I even yeah. have a photograph of him, which we all looked drunk. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, well, well, right. Okay. Yeah. Apart from these two act, two, apart from people here tonight, if you had to choose one actor to read your work, Oh, I'm not going to answer that. I already would offend three people. No, <laughs> uh, well, let's think of the dead. James Cagney oh, and right. uh, Catherine Hepburn. And this would offend nobody because they're all unavailable. Mm. <laughs> and Siobhan McKenna and who else? 
and I can get even more precise. Sarah Allgood. Mm. Sarah and Molly. Sarah, I love the way you speak, Sarah. Sarah. Your <laughs> friend. Yeah. Sarah. Did you read Joe Connor's book, Ghost Light, and, uh, about um, uh, Molly Allgood? I did. Yeah, I did. He's, great. He's such a super writer. I love, I love, I love him. Thank you. Cynthia, thank you very much. Oh, it's such a pleasure. You arrived on the question. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the well, the indicting question. question. Right. Pornography. Some of his language is pornography. Oh, that's right, Jay. I mean, he brings down two towers. He kills like three towers. Orchestrates like killing three, and and people are shocked that he has pornography. I mean, it's like, it, <laughs> his life was pornographic. His ideas were pornographic. I was very pleased when I read it because it reduced him as right. a great icon of man of God. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 That he and Schwarzenegger should have a moral failing in the same month is really something. <laughs>